afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard Allinger, and I am your host. Uh, this is my program called Richard Allinger Presents Lessons in Church History. I would like to kick off today's broadcast by uh, reading from the King James Version of the Hebrew and Greek Key Word Study Bible out of uh, Exodus chapter 19 and following. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Uh, we all know that is back in the Arabian Peninsula. For they were departed from Rapidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called the elders of the people, and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount." or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come, not at your wives. It shall come to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. 
And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And, and Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on, on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And, and the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down. And thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron, with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down into, unto the people. And spake unto them the Ten Commandments. Uh, now, because this is a study Bible, uh, many, half the people in the world can't even afford a 38 to 88 volume of Bible commentary. So that's why we have study Bibles. And they condense all the critical, important information you need to know to process this right right here at the, on the bottom of each page of one study Bible. And that's why it's important for biblicists who want to promote biblical literacy on the whole planet and propagate the gospel and the message of God. It's important that you get this out in the major uh, people speaking groups. And with regard to the study Bible and what you just heard me read, may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. And here the study note says... Uh, Israel had now arrived at Mount Sinai, where they would remain for almost a year. Some of the high points and low points of their history occurred here at Sinai. They rebelled against God and made an idol of gold. But also at this holy mountain, they received and ratified the Ten Commandments and most of the Law of Moses. God here makes a conditional promise to Israel that if they would obey him and keep his covenant, he would regard and treat them in a special way. The people chose instead to make a golden calf and forsake the God who had rescued them from Egyptian slavery. This event, as well as persistent infidelity, throughout most of their history, greatly limited the extent to which Israel could realize these promises. This passage is applied to uh, Christians in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, showing how a believer's obedience will benefit him. And the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20 of the Old Testament uh, reads as follows uh, and God spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image 
or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, or thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountains smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Instructions for building an altar. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto me gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offering and thy peace offering, thy sheep and thine oxen in all places where I record my name. I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. And again, thank God for the study Bible format and the note here. Uh, they elucidate upon what we have just heard uh, in the reading of God's word, of which we're asking him to add a blessing to also. And the study note in this Hebrew and Greek key uh, word study Bible uh, says, with regard to... Uh, Exodus 20. With these Ten Commandments, the covenant with Israel begins. The ancient rabbis isolate, isolated 613 separate commandments in the entire law of Moses. But these ten are the principles upon which the rest are based. By themselves, they are called the words of the covenant. Exodus 34, verse 28. The first four commandments deal with reverence for God directly, while the latter six refer to man's relationship. The first four have as their theme total love for God, as expressed in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, which is the Shema. In Hebrew, Shema Yisrael 
Adonai Elohino Adonai Akod. In English, that means Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. And you are to love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The last six are summarized in the statement in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore Jesus took 613 commandments, which he had condensed to 10 in the law of Moses, and reduced them to two. See Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 40. All of God's commandments in the Old Testament dealing with how his people should live may be abbreviated simply to have love for God and man. Now I'm going to move up to, uh, still in the, the Pentateuch, or the, book, the five books of Moses, leaving Exodus and going to Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Deuteronomy 18.18 18 reads, I will raise them up. In other words, this is the Lord actually speaking to his prophet Moses in Deuteronomy 18, 18, and he is saying this. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brother, brethren, likened unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Now, the study, this is a study Bible, a little elucidation by looking at the note over those verses, uh, states thus. The identity of this new, unnamed prophet is not revealed anywhere in the Old Testament. By Jesus' day, the Jews had developed a clear-cut expectation of a yet future figure who would fulfill Moses' words. Priests and Levites from Jerusalem asked John the Baptist if he was the prophet, and he denied it. It is elsewhere revealed that the prophet spoken in these verses is, according to this interpretation, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, they cite Acts chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Going to Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 3, verse 22. This is uh, Peter's address to the people at Pentecost. And Peter w was saying here in Acts chapter 3, verse 22, But these things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, 
when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren liken unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying, Unto Abraham and in thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in the turning away every one of you from his iniquities. And uh, and then uh, also in this Hebrew and Greek key word study Bible, uh, New Testament, Acts chapter 5, verse 24 through 32 uh, reads following. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Uh, then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And ye are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given unto them that obey him. When they had heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Now, uh, I'm going to set this particular key Hebrew and Greek uh, word study Bible aside and pick up um, the Schofield uh, Bible. which is uh, the Holy Bible uh, Schofield study system. And with that, I'm going to open this Schofield Bible up to Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 26. Peter's second sermon theme, the covenants will be fulfilled. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, Jesus 
whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And now, the reason I have this, I've switched from the key uh, Hebrew and Greek study Bible to the Schofield study Bible is for this note here. Uh, and the note says, with regard to what you just heard read, uh, namely, seasons in which through the appearance of the Messiah in his kingdom, uh, there shall occur blessed rest and refreshment for the people of God. The appeal here is national to the Jewish people as such, not individual as in Peter's first sermon in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. There, those who were pricked in heart were exhorted to save themselves from among the untoward nation. Here, the whole people is addressed, and the promise to national repentance is national deliverance. And he shall send Jesus Christ to bring in the times which the prophets had foretold in Acts chapter 2, verse 14. The official answer was the imprisonment of the apostles and the uh, inhibition to preach so fulfilling Luke chapter 19 verse 14. Now the word in Greek apokatesos means restoration occurring here and Acts chapter 1 verse 6 only. The meaning is limited by the words which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets. The prophets speak of the restoration of Israel to the land. Genesis 12, 2 and 3, Romans 11 and 26 also, the Palestinian covenant. Now, the uh, Jewish people are offended when you call Israel Palestine. They don't let you do that in their presence. You have to call Israel Israel when you're in front of a Jew. But in Schofield's note, he calls this the Palestinian Covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 9, notes of the restoration of the theocracy under David's son. The Davidic Covenant, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 8 through 17. And note the kingdom, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. Zechariah 12, verse 8, note, No prediction of the conversion and restoration of the wicked dead is found in the prophets or elsewhere. See Revelation 20, verses 11 through 15. One minute? Okay. In the, in the, in the last remaining minute... Uh, to break. Pardon me? One minute to break. One minute? To break. For break, yeah, where I'm into break, uh, and in the last minute uh, before I break, I wanted to tell you because uh, Labor Day is approaching September 7th, uh, I, I want to wish you all a blessed uh, uh, and a happy Labor Day. And uh, I'll be praying that we all have a, not only a happy Labor Day, but a happy eternity as well. I hope you come back.
es un corto trayecto de su colonia hasta su bosque local. Encuentre actividades como pasear en bote y en bicicleta o ir a acampar y de excursión, además de mucho más. Para encontrar un parque o zona verde cerca de usted, visite descubreelbosque.org. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm so glad that you have joined me. And in uh, the previous discussion uh, in Lessons of Church History, I was speaking about that new prophet, like Moses, that is to come. It's referred to in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, and the Pentateuch, uh, uh, one of the five books of Moses in the Hebrew Torah, and in your uh, Holy Bible. Uh, the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy called the Pentateuch. And uh, the, uh, uh, I, I referred to the Hebrew and Greek uh, key word study Bible in the previous session and also uh, the uh, Schofield Reference Bible uh, read the passages in Deuteronomy 18.18 18, and in Acts chapter 3.22 what is said in the Old and New Testament about this word that was given to Moses about another new prophet coming into the world like Moses? Uh, who would this be? And uh, further research took me to what is called the MacArthur Study Bible. And I'm going to read that verse now, uh, picking up uh, in Deuteronomy chapter. Uh, we'll start where it says in the MacArthur Study Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 18, starting with verse 15, it says, A new prophet like Moses. And uh, it reads, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear, according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them, all that I command him, and it shall be that whosoever uh, will not hear my words which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. Now the note in the MacArthur Study Bible says uh, over these verses, a prophet like me, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, the singular pronoun, now remember, these study Bibles come from anywhere from 38 to 88 volumes of extensive study of the scriptures and Bible commentaries of which most people cannot afford in the world. So that's why it's great to purchase a study Bible and then be involved with, like, I'm going to Bibles International Seminar up in Grand Rapids in October. It's a Bible uh, study Bible propagator that gets these study Bibles out into the hands of people that only live on two dollars a day. Oh, I hope you get involved too. I'm excited about getting this Bible into the hands of every human being on the face of the earth. Uh, study Bibles. It's how we can fulfill Jesus Christ's great commission and it's for God's glory alone. And so with regard to uh, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, looking at that study note that further elucidates in a simplistic manner for laymen to understand the singular pronoun, because these biblical eschatologists and uh, expositors and theologians and scholars, they go back into the Hebrew and Greek and dig out through exegesis the deep meanings of these words, the root meanings, the Hebrew and and they're giving you an, uh, 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 a view 
uh, and an understanding of the words that you may have never had before, only knowing the English. So here it says, uh, the singular pronoun emphasizes the ultimate prophet uh, who was to come, both the Old Testament in uh, Deuteronomy 34.10 and the New Testament, Acts 3.22-23, and in Acts 7.37, interpret this passage has a reference to the coming Messiah. Uh, the Jews or Hebrew people call him Yeshua, Shama Kamashiach, uh, who, like Moses, would receive and preach divine revelation and lead his people. In fact, Jesus was like Moses in several ways. Uh, he was... Uh, spared death as a baby like Moses. He renounced a royal court like Moses. He had compassion on his people like Moses. He made intercession for the people like Moses. He spoke with God face to face And he was the mediator of a covenant. Now, you know that Moses, by the ordination and disposition of angels, was given the Ten Commandments, and Moses was the mediator of that. And Jesus, the old, Moses was the mediator of the Old Covenant, and by the same token, Jesus is the mediator of the New Testament. I've got right here, when he instituted the New Testament in his blood, these are convenient uh, cups of the fellowship cup of the Welch's grape juice and the wafer that you remember. Jesus said that uh, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And uh, when you do this, you do it in remembrance of me that my body was broken on the cross and that my blood was shed for you, to redeem you, uh, and to heal you, and save you from sin, and to give you the gift of eternal life. Uh, now, these are on sale, too, at uh, the Lighthouse Bible and Herb and the Sunshine Bible Bookshop, uh, the Holy Communion uh, Fellowship Cup. And now, he's, Jesus is the mediator uh, of the New Covenant, and uh, in, in the New Covenant was founded in his blood, and his sacrifice on Mount Calvary. Uh, Jesus was the mediator of a covenant, and so was Moses. Moses, the old covenant, and Jesus, the new covenant. Um, and then, uh, turning to um, Deuteronomy chapter 34, uh, with regard to Moses, he, Moses dies on Mount Nebo. Uh, when Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho, and the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan, all of Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, and he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his grave to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His, his eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. 
And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses ended. Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But since then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face in all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt before Pharaoh, before all his servants and in his land, and by all that mighty power and all the great terror which Moses performed in the sight of Israel. Uh, now the note on uh, 34 7 says uh, these verses that I had just read uh, the uh, concluding chapter was obviously written by someone other than Moses probably the writer Joshua to bridge out of Deuteronomy and Joshua it has a bridge between Deuteronomy and Joshua uh, Pisgah the range or ridge of which Mount Nebo was highest point the Lord showed him from the top of the mountain Moses was allowed to see the panorama of the la the land of the Lord had promised to uh, that the Lord had promised to give the land of Canaan to the patriarchs and their seed in Genesis uh, to Ab Abraham and uh, he buried him the context indicates that the Lord is the one who buried Moses and man did not have a part in it, which recounts uh, Archangel Michael uh, and Satan's dispute over the body of Moses. Uh, Moses' physical vision and physical health were not diminished, were not impaired. It was not death by natural causes that kept Moses from leading Israel into the promised land it was his unfaithfulness to the Lord at Meribah the mourning period for Moses conformed to that of Aaron the spirit of wisdom laid his hands on Joshua received confirmation of the military and administrative ability necessary to task the Lord had given him as well as the spiritual wisdom to rely on and to be committed to the Lord through the laying on of Moses' hands. A prophet like Moses, remember back in Deuteronomy 18 and now here in Deuteronomy 34.10, uh, Deuteronomy 18.18 18, and now here Deuteronomy chapter 34.10, a prophet like Moses, a new prophet like Moses. Moses was the greatest of all the Old Testament prophets, one whom the Lord knew intimately, not until John the Baptist was there another prophet greater than Moses. After John, the prophet came, of whom Moses wrote with Deuteronomy 18, 18, Moses is next appeared on Mount of Transfiguration together with Elijah and Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 17 in the Transfiguration before Christ went down and surrendered his life uh, in Jerusalem, uh, which led to our eternal salvation, his death on Golgotha. Um, and also I wanted to step up to Acts chapter 7, verse 30 in the MacArthur, MacArthur Bible. Acts chapter 7, verse 30 reads Acts chapter 7 verse 30 reads and when 40 years had passed an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai when Moses saw it he marveled at the sight and as he drew near to observe the voice of the Lord came to him saying I am the God of your fathers the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Acts 
And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who uh, are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. Now I've got to read you some breaking news at this point. It just came to my attention before I sat down here. The Congressman Julian Bond of Atlanta, Georgia, years ago, back in the 60s, he was a congressman from Atlanta, Georgia. Julian Bond has passed away at seven. He's went home to receive his reward. He was a faithful servant. He has just passed over uh, this week. He was 75 years old. Not only was he a former congressman of Atlanta, Georgia, but Julian Bond was also uh, an activist in the American Civil Rights Movement and had a tremendous impact of social justice. And also Julian Bond was uh, the chairman of the NAACP. And if we had time, I would have a moment of silence in remembering him and honoring him, but time will not permit it. But my viewing audience, as you find time alone with your Lord, please pray uh, and thank God for him and his family and the tremendous contribution he made. And uh, I'm going to actually uh, uh, get with... Uh, the government officials at the federal level and the postal department and see if they can put Julian Bond on a postage stamp uh, like they have recent people who have died like Ray Charles. They put Ray Charles on a postage stamp. Uh, they have put um, uh, Rosa Parks on a postage stamp and um, John John Johnson, who was a great African American uh, philanthropist, and uh, also I have contacted the federal government, the state government, and the city municipalities, and uh, all the branches of the federal government, uh, legislative, judicial, and executive, and uh, other people that might be able to request that uh, pre the former president of the United States, George W. Bush, and uh, the 44th president of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, uh, heads be sculpted in the granite stone up at the Mount Rushmore uh, presidential monument uh, in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Because uh, these two men, it was during their watch that the uh, orchestration of the elimination of Iraq Saddam Hussein and uh, bin Laden, how the Navy SEALs uh, uh, found bin Laden and seized him in Islamabad, uh, Pakistan, during President Obama's watch and eliminated both of these men, which I believe... Uh, has made America a safer place. So in tribute to them, uh, and because many of my African American friends, uh, uh, actually I was weeping over the fact that my some of my close African American friends actually thought and felt that in their heart that that presidential monument at Mount Rushmore was a monument to racism. And I was kind of shocked because, you know, uh, Abraham Lincoln's up there with who they call T.R., that's Teddy Roosevelt, and he was the first president to ever uh, appoint a Jewish man into his administration, and African-American people, too. And Abraham Lincoln was considered a, a, the great emancipator who pushed through Congress uh, during the Civil War period uh, the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery for 4 million slaves. Uh, so uh, I, 
I was hurt by that. And I, that's why, again, another reason I'd like to see the government uh, put President, the first African-American president, Barack Hussein Obama, in that granite stone, sculpt his head. It's on a, 160 acres of land. There's plenty of room up there in those Black Hills of South Dakota to sculpt, in addition to T.R., uh, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Thomas Jefferson, the head of George W. Bush and Barack Hussein Obama, because it was during their watches that our country was made a safer place. And with an African American up there, too, is appropriate. So they've already been notified, all the government officials at every different level, I want to invoke your prayer that this be done expeditiously and as soon as possible. And I'm excited about the fact that in President Obama's home stretch up to November 2016, he signs in law African American Independence Day, June 19th, to be a nationally observed holiday. Because that's when Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery for four million people. And I'd like to see him also uh, instruct his Secretary of Treasure to uh, put Harriet Tubman, because I believe the first person that Jesus appeared to when he came back from the dead was a woman. And a, and a woman's place is on money, but on these Federal Reserve notes ever since they were designed in 1929, they've never had a woman on them. And there was an election on the Internet, a half a million people uh, actually voted of, of, of a list of 20 women, and Harriet Tubman was picked. She was uh, a, a spy in the Abraham Lincoln administration, and she helped an underground railroad hide slaves from certain death down south through bringing them up here to the underground railroad, even up here in Michigan where they were hid over by Eisenhower's school in a 150-year-old house. It's still there, but it's been moved on wheels down to Swartz Creek Golf Course on Parkside Drive. It's a historic monument. And Mr. Cummings, who was on the Board of Education, uh, Board of Trustees, gave that land where Eisenhower Elementary School is at, and he lived in that house. And because it's historic with regard to the Underground Railroad, in its basement when it was there, where Eisenhower School stands today, uh, they had a tunnel that was dug under Miller Road onto the Michigan School for the Deaf campus, and that's where they would take the slaves out from hiding uh, to, to, so uh, they would not be killed. So Harriet Tubman was brave, and her legacy needs to live on. And we're hoping that President Obama instructs the Secretary of Treasury to remove Andrew Jackson off the $20 bill and put Harriet Tubman's uh, image on this $20 bill so that she would be honored. Uh, the Lord has always used women in his redemptive plan. That's probably why he appeared to a woman first when he was resurrected from the dead. Uh, even the angel Gabriel told the lowly Virgin Mary when she was about 15 or 16, in a vision the angel Gabriel appeared to her. Most pitch people depict the angel as one that stands about seven feet tall. He has a long white robe on and most of the angels have lighter hair, but this angel Gabriel has jet black hair, the color of raven feathers, and he's got great big silver wings up the back of him, barefoot. And he said uh, to Mary that you're gr uh, greatly blessed of the Most High, and the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, and thy child that you will have shall save his people from their sins. In all generations, he told the archangel Gabriel, Virgin Mary shall call you blessed. Uh, so women, because they are so special to the Lord, are being given their rightful place now. And even the Democratic National Convention may appoint Hillary Clinton to be the nominee and the first woman ever elected president of the United States. Well, in the closing two minutes of this broadcast, uh, again, people, when you go to the post office uh, or the library, they have Rosa Park bookmarks. They have Third Gold Marshall bookmarks. They have um, uh, Abraham Lincoln bookmarks for the great works that they have done that all people be treated uh, 
like you would wish to be treated. Buy stamps when you go to the post office. Here's uh, uh, remembered for his calm determination and quiet dignity, Robert Robinson Taylor, 1868 to 1942, is believed to have been both the first black graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the country's first academically trained black architect, a compliment that helped open a new profession to African Americans. Buy these black history stamps when you're at the post office. Uh, here, here's uh, uh, early uh, in the morning, black history stamps here er, in the post office. Early in the morning, you get a whole sheet for about 7 or $8. Early in the morning on August 28th, 1963, hours before the march, remember Julian Bond I told you about, Martin Luther King, hours before the march on Washington for jobs and freedom was to begin. These stamps can be memorialized if you will buy them and put them on your letters. Cortland Cox, the top official from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, walked to the still deserted National Mall with the chief organizer of the march, and in quiet, mist rose from the reflecting pool. Cox turned to Russin and said, Do you think anybody's coming? They came. They arrived by bus, train, and car. They bicycled from Ohio, hitchhiked from Alabama, and walked from Brooklyn. One young man roller skated from Chicago that day. Some 250,000 people joined one another in the hope and belief that change was possible. I'll see you at the next broadcast, and remember always that Jesus is our soon-coming King, and remember to get alone, talk with God, walk with God, and pray, pray, pray to your beloved, dear Heavenly Father, and through the blood of His Son, Jesus, thank Him for our redemption from sin and all that He's done. We are so blessed, and God is so good. I'll see you in the next broadcast. I hope you join me in my Lessons for Church History.